All right, everybody, you ready to go? So we have our new friend. Actually, it's kind of a new old friend that we actually haven't met yet. I've met her, obviously. Um, Cindy Ray, she's here with us today. She's been helping us kind of in the background with dosing for turpentine and just getting to see what your personal best next steps are for our detox, for our liver detox, for candida cleanse, parasite cleanse, and then moving into fasting and keto. So she's been so instrumental. Thank you so much. It's been so awesome to be able to have her help us and um, just to kind of get to the bottom of it instead of just guessing and just kind of making assumptions because we want to make sure that each of you are getting exactly what you need at the right time and not overtaking something or undertaking something so that way you get the best results. So anyway, I'm so glad that she's here. I kept thinking about having you on actually one of our meetings, but it was always like last minute. I'm like, oh, she should come and talk to us. But like, you know what? Forget it. We'll just do a formal interview <laughs> and get all the information and make it easier that way. So thanks for being here. And um, yeah, so let me share with you all a little bit about her first. And then her and I will have a little conversation. You guys can all listen in, um, kind of like fly on the wall. And then if you like, if you're here live, you can go ahead and put some questions in the chat as we go along. If you have anything for me or for her, and at the end, we'll come back to it and answer some questions um, as we finish up. So, okay, so let me tell you a little bit about her, about Cindy. So first of all, before I dive into her, so obviously her and I have a similar name, which is interesting. <laughs> um, and we, we we first met at a pop-up wellness event over, I think it was November or December um, in Idaho at Debbie's Furniture Store. And um, somebody came up to my table, I was sharing my book and they're like, oh, you're Cindy Ray. And I said, yeah. And they said, and they said, oh, I thought you had blonde hair. I'm like, no. <laughs> so I was totally confused. And then they they walked down and saw her table with her um, teas and stuff. I'm like, oh, there she is. So it was just interesting how we met. And it's been really amazing since. And she's been sharing with me so much information and things that I've really been looking for answers to. So I'm really happy um, to have her in my life and to have this relationship that we have. So, um, so welcome again. So again, her name is Cindy Ray. She says like the ray of sunshine, I love it, on a mission to return people to God's natural way of living, where everyone has a garden and the food we grow is our medicine. That's awesome. Uh, 25 years ago, she turned her back on the pharmaceutical model of healthcare and had four home births, uh, shutting the door on all well-child doctor visits, toxic injections, and antibiotics, and instead relying on whole food, herbs, and home remedies to keep her children healthy. She's a visionary founder of Happiness Hives, created of the Be Happy Now hard deck of natural living, plus custom blend detox tea to help prevent gas and bloating. That's awesome too. Um, with 25 years of experience in education, she's created the Happiness Hives healing deck, which she'll share with us today, um, to help people learn how to use natural remedies, plus a delicious custom blend of detox tea to help prevent gas and bloating. Her qualifications include being a mother of five, grandmother of three, wow, um, nutritional therapy practitioner, emotion code, body code, and belief code practitioner, uh, Chopra certified meditation instructor, massage therapist, reflexologist, and trained sound healer, yoga instructor, Reiki master, and advanced energy worker. Sounds like me. Like we love all the things. They're so awesome. <laughs> so anyway, so welcome again. Oh, you know what? People are entering our room. Hang on one sec. Get them in before I continue at all. Okay. Okay. So welcome again um so tell us a little bit I mean did I did I catch everything in your intro is there anything you wanted to add to that or did I no that's perfect yes got it I mean oh okay. unless you want my my strong opinion so I believe yeah for sure that um big pharma big tech big egg are stealing our future and that we're unknowingly funding it I believe that they are the cause of the epidemics of obesity cancer diabetes depression suicide and getting out of their toxic systems, it's what's going to return us to our true health and happiness. And that's, mm. that's like the underlying message. Um, so the Be Happy Now card deck is just like this whole process okay. to get out of the toxic systems while giving people the tools to be happy today. But that's my, that's my like strong thing. Cool. Now we can get like yeah, all happy yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the bare bones, I say grassroots, like, you know, the, the foundation of it all. So, okay. Yeah, so tell us, statement. yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So, um, so I shared a little bit about, you know, in your bio about your, how you kind of got into this and what made you interested, but how did you start out just out? How did it happen for you? How did you start getting in interested in this field? 
you can tell tell us from your perspective. So when I was, I remember being a teenage mom and wanting to have a natural childbirth and how hard the medical system made it. And I wanted to have a healthy baby like we all do, but I didn't know what to do. And I felt like trapped in the system. Every well child doctor visit was just another round of injections, which I wasn't really sure if they were helping my baby to be any healthier. And then when she got sick, they just, you know, prescribed antibiotics. She had a reaction and I just knew something was broken. I'm like, this isn't working, but I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I had my second birth in 1997, I did Bradley childbirth classes mm -hmm. and I learned, that's where I learned about the power of whole food. They're like, oh, if you just eat whole food, so no white flour, no white sugar, no processed foods, no seed oils, and you can prevent everything from preeclampsia to gestational diabetes, things I'd seen my friends go through that can be really devastating and cause yeah. someone to be on bed rest. And so that's when I was like, oh, that's it. Like, just don't eat that and eat this. And so that's what I did. And basically, mm -hmm. so I had five kids. They had things like eye infections, ear infections, you know, strep, all of that. And I was still able to treat it at home based on that foundation of, you know, discovering the power of whole foods, which obviously everyone in this group is 100% turned on to. Right, for sure. Yeah, So, um, so at this point, I know it's been some years since then, but at this point, who are you, who's your population? Who's coming to you for help? Who do you serve? Yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> Why do you ask such hard questions? Vivian's <laughs> brain looks like, like so I, I different from mine. She's like, I super smart and puts everything in order. And I'm like, <laughs> like, I, I know no, that but, like, but I'm supposed to have like that key and answer. Yes. I just had a client call me who has um, wonder. I mean, she's like worried about, you know, breast cancer and what the doctor's diagnosis and was wondering for options. Yeah. Obviously everyone makes the decision that's best for themselves. So. Yeah. So is it, is it Probably just people like general population? I mean, are just anybody, how do people find you actually even that that's <clears> maybe <throat> a good place to start. Is it word of mouth or like, how do they know? Cause it's, you obviously do a different, different type of healthcare. Um, how do people... I had a studio in Liberty Lake. So I had a, a big storefront that was fabulous. Mm -hmm. Um, energy massage and reflexology. And then I had, so I could do like 20 people sound baths. I had a separate meditation room, reflexology room, massage room, reception area. It was just lovely. But then during COVID, um, Washington was the wrong state to be in. Mm -hmm. So I just like went over to the Idaho border and mm -hmm. which was really, I'm yeah, opinionated on that as well, because that I had to close my business, but yet I could put money and support other businesses that were open. And right. after all those years, like as a single mom, I had built that business. And so, so that's how a lot of people found me. And then okay. just doing like events locally mm -hmm. has been a lot of word of mouth. Yeah. And then I do have my website, which is happiness hives, but I okay. don't, haven't really figured out how to do that. Yeah. So then are you working with like all ages? Are you working, yes. are, are most of the people that come to you a little older? Where, what are the people that tend to gravitate towards you? Where, where are they coming from? What are they like? I think it's, well, just like you, it's usually women over 40 who realize like, like they're going to live, they want to live longer and they want to have a quality of life mm -hmm. and they want options or they've already been living natural and they're just continuing seeking out these wonderful ways of being. Okay. So do people just cause, so I, so just so you all know too, I met with her yesterday and I wanted her to treat me with one of her sessions and um, it was amazing. And there was things that she helped me uncover that I had no idea were even a thing. So I've been struggling, you know, with, I've talked about this before, probably in our group, but with like rosacea on my nose and then some other skin issues and um, things I really have never had clear answers to. So we kind of focused on that yesterday and she was showing me how it, the redness in my nose wasn't necessarily about bacteria. <laughs> you might've been partially but it was actually about some resentment I was holding on to from the past. And so she helped me kind of walk through that, clear the energy from that, and then replace it with positive of affirmations and truths and um, in order to clear that. So for me, it was, I've, I've done treatments similar to it before, but to get to a place where you can take the issue, the problem, figure out the underlying issue, and then clear the energy to treat it so your body can self-heal was a different level. I've, I've only had it where somebody has checked me, told me what's going on, but then, you know, usually um, prescribed some kind of homeopathic remedy or some kind of tincture, um, but never actually got to the root root, you know, the emotional side of things, which for me was really powerful. 
so um, is that something that you normally do or how does how does your your practice work? That is a big part of it. The muscle testing is what I learned in 2010. And it's where you connect, your body has an energy field and your body knows what's best for you. Okay. So it's like saying someone wants to go to sleep and everyone else like, oh, lavender helps you sleep. Well, maybe for you, if we muscle tested, we asked your energy system, you need a combination of like lavender, lang lang and cedarwood. And that's your magic sleep oil. Okay. So, so everyone's so individual. So muscle testing is just connecting in. I've, some people know of a chiropractor where they muscle test hold up the arm. I can do it. The person doesn't even have to be there because energy is energy and distance doesn't matter. And then I just use my muscles on my fingers. Okay. So that's an awesome thing to start sharing. So let's go into that. So tell us a little bit about muscle testing for people who have never even heard of it or don't know how it works or are maybe skeptical about the whole thing. How is It's energy based. I know that. Um, because everything is just energy. Um, so everything just breaks down in and you can, you can muscle test for yourself. This is what's so fun. So what I usually do, if you've never done this before, this is where everyone starts. Like you would stand up mm -hmm. and then and if, if you're here, you can do that now. Stand up, mm -hmm. close your eyes and tell your body, show me a yes. And then just notice, does your body pull in one direction or the other? And then show me a no. Does it pull in another direction? So typically your That's body cool. is going to sway forward. This is called the sway test. Your body's going to sway it. forward on a yes, sway mm -hmm. backward on a no. If yours is reversed, your polarity is reversed and not something that I would correct. But you can use this form of muscle testing to ask things. But what I can do is just more of, it's more of an advanced form because it's how you word things. It's if you're clear, are you hydrated? There's so much to being really, really accurate with muscle testing. But you can tell that it's something you could do on your own. And I like people to have their own power because ultimately you will always know best for you. So is, of course, yeah, that's so true. So then, um, and I'm thinking just energy in general, like a battery, for example, there's a positive and a negative charge. So I know yesterday we were talking and you mentioned if you want to muscle test yourself to ask yourself a question that has a positive or negative response. And right, then later so like, that day, I thought, oh, that's there, you could do the sway test. You could be like, my, so I usually do by statement. So advanced muscle testers say statements, people who are just learning they'll they, their mind just goes to questions. So instead of saying, you know, so I would statement is my name is Cindy. And now that I know what my yes looks like and my no looks like I could feel my body pulling forward. So my name is Cindy. And then I would say, my name is John. And then you could feel it. And then you could see with things that you already know. Okay. how accurate you are oh to test it you know it's to interesting test it because you know your name so you would be able to tell right and you know I'm thinking about that too so I also want to talk about how you um helped us with turpentine dosing but I'm going to have another question first so um just like about um just you can ask yourself if there's something in your going on with your body and you're like oh I'm not sure if this is right or wrong for me right now like last like yesterday I asked you about fasting and so I thought hmm how can we Indiv as individuals in this particular group who are practicing fasting and things, um, how can we know when the best time is outside of what I've, you know, in our group, I share like, the best times to fast and so on. Um, but specific to each person, like this fasting, this amount of time today working out for me is, my, is in my best interest. Anyway, so, so Cindy tested me yesterday. I was doing a longer fast. Usually on Mondays, I do my longer. So I asked her, it was later in the afternoon for me. And I asked her about it and she's like, you know, she tested me and she's like, you don't really don't need it right now. And I thought, oh, okay. So I was going for a 36 hour fast. And it, by then it was like hour 24. So I was like, all right. So I grabbed a little peanut butter and moved on with my day <laughs> and I was fine. So sometimes it's nice, you know, just to kind of have that option to tailor it specifically to you, you know, each individual to know exactly what your body needs in the moment, or if it's too much or not necessary. Or if it's, yeah, go for it. You know, let's dive in, even if it's hard and do it. So um, does that apply? I mean, is that correct? Am I explaining yes. that right? Okay. Yes, that, that's why it's nice because once again, it, it puts the power back in you. But that's why it's nice to come to someone else because not everyone wants to learn that. There's a lot of skills I don't want to learn. Okay. Because I mean, it was six months of training and then more and more years of practice to get really, really dialed in and to be quick and fast. But start using it because the more you use it, then maybe like you might just pick it up and be able to flow with your energy and ask yourself things. 
Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Just to have like a basic, like some quick, easy questions, you know, or, or yeah. curiosities. So, okay. So, but beyond that, so that's, that's really basic. That's just kind of for us to get by for a little. Um, but so yesterday when we went through the whole process together, can you kind of explain that? I think that'd be really helpful for everybody to kind of, and if you want to do like an example or just kind of explain what we did yesterday and how it, how it helps people. So what, when I've done so many varieties of energy work, I've trained in over 20 modalities and one that just pulls everything together in an easily understandable way. It started with the emotion code. I learned that back in 2011. This is Dr. Bradley Nelson. He was a chiropractor and many of his clients would come to him and they would get to a point where they just weren't getting better. And he's like, I wonder what it is. And what he found out is that many times it's trapped emotions mm. that, that's causing the physical pain or the symptoms. And when he released these trapped emotions, all of a sudden they got better. Hmm. And then, then he moved that up into something called, so that's the emotion code. There's 64 different emotions. And then I go through a chart. So let's, um, since I was just talking to yeah, you can Debbie, share your screen if you... so Debbie, do I have your permission? You can just say, yes. I'm assuming you're going to say yes. Can I release an emotion for you? Debbie says, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. There you go. <laughs> So normally when we start, it's good to tap into that higher source. So um, I you can start with a moment of silence and or prayer. I usually do verbal, verbal prayers. We're just going to connect to that energy. I'm going to ask, do I have Debbie's permission to test? Yes. And then she gave me her verbal permission. There's the emotion I can release now. Yes. And then if I could share my screen, but I can't, but here's the emotion code chart, mm -hmm. the 64 emotions. So there's two columns and six columns two columns, six rows. So it's in row A, row B. I can test for her row one, two, three, four, five. We can release the emotion of conflict, creative insecurity, terror, unsupported, wishy-washy. So we can release the emotion of wishy-washy in this group. So if you do anything with acupuncture, you have a governing meridian. This is like this big main meridian going over the top of your head. So if you were here, I would just swipe my hand or a magnet but if someone's not here, I can just do it to myself. So setting the intention to release this wishy-washy in Debbie at this time. And then that's released. And then I just confirm that that emotion is taken out of her. That's, so then it helps so cool. you move forward. And then there's so much we could do. Like maybe there was an emotion. I've done some things like this isn't a positive story, but they usually aren't. Like when the word horror comes up and then I'll tell an age and people will have a different memory. I was doing a massage once and I was doing some emotion code release. And then afterwards the woman, she's like, Oh, do you want to know what that was? And I'm thinking, do I No. <laughs> she's like, when I was a child, my parents used to lock me in, in a dark basement. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they would bring me food. And I remember there'd be a light at the door and maybe a half frozen pot pie and like her hair. I mean, it was just, it mm -hmm. was just horror from childhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's literal horror. Mm -hmm. And so releasing that but she knew, and I've also had other times mm -hmm. that same word came up for another client mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, it was you or three. And she's like, okay, well, I don't remember anything. She went home and she talked to her brother mm -hmm. and her brother's like, um, sis, don't you remember? That's when dad raped mom between our beds, mm. but her brain couldn't process that. And there's no reason to remember, which is another reason I love this work. Why bring up your deepest, darkest, scariest stuff? when we can just release all of that, mm -hmm. a lot of the pain, so it doesn't trigger you, it becomes a memory. And that's the power of this work because it's not what you know. We all have all of this great information. It's how you feel, which usually dictates what you do. Very yes, few so of us move beyond our sense of feeling. Oh, I know I shouldn't eat this, but I feel so bad, I make a bad choice. So getting rid of these emotions, can help you to stay on the path that you know is the best for you. That is so freeing. Yeah, that's so neat. So a couple things. Um, so when you mentioned about, I've done it before in a spiritual aspect with a pastor who was teaching us how to how to get rid of past emotions, but bringing God into it and envisioning, you know, Jesus there and taking the things. So when, when her and I, when Cindy and I worked together yesterday and she was releasing things from me, I, I closed my eyes and I like to, I'm very visual. I like to create visions, but I invited God into it. And then gave, every time she gave up something for me, I gave it, I put it in God's hands. 
And so I was like, okay, Lord, you know, we're here together. And I released it to him. He, I feel like I, Jesus was standing in front of me and he just had his hands out, give them to me. So every time I would give it to him. And then when she made declarations over me about truths, we replaced them with, you know, positive things I need to know in my life. Then I received them as if God was giving them to me as well, which are his truths. So, and I wanted to say that too, because a lot of times um, if we're unfamiliar with energy work and, and important, this is the thing that bugs me and it's always bugged me for so long. But that term energy work, right? Everyone's like, oh no, it's, you know, taboo or it's of, not of God and all these things. But I, it makes me so frustrated because who is the creator of our bodies and our body's energy? God, right? And just like so many other things in this world, unfortunately, you know, Satan tries to take over it and and makes, you know, has, um, a, what's it called? What's it called? The um, new age, right? Everything, you know, is like new age or, or Wicca or something outlandish. And then they steal that, you know, that property of God and the energetic healing power that he has. So, you know, my, my family, I grew up kind of um, not Pentecostal, but more uh, spiritual, I guess you would say. So I've seen a lot of healings happen through God. You know, I've seen a lot of interesting things happen, but I was thinking about it yesterday. It's like when I'm touching somebody to heal them, like praying healing over them, I've had some training in this area, but what you want to look for is your energy transferring to them. So you kind of start feeling a tingling in your hand. And then you ask them, do you feel the warmth? And when they do, that's the energy from my hand from the Holy spirit transferring to this person. And they're receiving healing in that moment from through the prayer that I'm asking Jesus to do, to do through me. Right. So when she mentioned that, and, and she's telling me about energy, I was like, wait a second, that's very similar to what I've experienced from a spiritual aspect. And then also, also from a spiritual aspect of clearing old memories that, that things that may have happened in real life, but they have no power over you anymore. Like they're, they happen and they're just memories, but the charge around it doesn't keep coming back and making you a slave to it, right? You're just not like remembering it like, ah, and then reliving the trauma over and over again. You finally, that's through prayer, we do this too, is set people free from that hamster wheel of like the memory and it goes around your brain and comes back. And then goes around your brain and comes back and kind of, man, that's part of the trauma, you know, and sets in. I'm sure it's probably more to it than that, but that's what I've experienced. So is that correct? I mean, is that connection? I'm just now making that connection. <laughs> so, I don't know. Does that sound so good? Right. Yes. And I do start with okay. her and I do pray to God. So most people yeah. are comfortable with that, especially the area that I'm in, mm -hmm. because there is, there is this creator energy and no matter what religion it is, it's that same power. And I've been in this work long enough. Um, mm -hmm. And and people do, they take it for what it is. So uh, I created a card deck and one Christian woman, she's like, well, I'm Christian. I don't do tarot. This is not tarot. I've read tarot cards before and I totally stepped out of that energy because the whole purpose, the whole cards that were created, which is why um, some Christian religions won't even play with a deck of cards because if you know tarot, you can do it with a deck of cards. It's the exact oh, same. Gosh. Well, what it feels like too, for me is the energy that you tap into. Right. It's like if you're yes, tapping it's into all intention. evil spirit, <laughs> then yep. that's where you be. But if you tap into God, right. So even when I do um yoga, people think, oh, Christians and yoga, that's such a controversy, right? Because of you know, in or Hindu and all that stuff or Buddhism. And I'm thinking, and I remember one day I was like, you know what, God, tell me the truth about this. Cause I feel when I do it, I feel really good. I feel rejuvenated, I re feel recharged, I feel God's presence if I'm tapping into his energy. You know, I ask God to be with me. And I just lay there, you know, whatever they, when you lay down the dead pose, or they, <laughs> you know, I lay there and I just invite, that. yeah. And I invite him in and it's the spirit of God is there. And I, and I feel rejuvenated. I feel healed. I feel, I, I feel warmth, his warmth. I feel um, him speaking to me because that quiet time, like meditative time. And even the word meditation has gotten a weird connotation over the years, but that's biblical, you know? So anyway, that's my little stance. It, it for a long time, it's been bugging me. And I even asked God about it. I'm like, what's the truth? And and kind of, I was reminded of, well, who created these things and who took it and um, made it something bad, you know, like, like, or tweaked it. So now it's like, has a, a bad connotation or a label, but of course you want to be wise and know what you're stepping into, but so. Well, and that's, that's the clarity. And so I, it's just like, there's churches, there's churches, there's been high up in every single church, there's been corruption and abuse, yeah. Yeah. but yet we don't throw the whole church out and just say, oh. Well, it looks like we can't have that church anymore. And we're just going <laughs> to, it's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Right. Bath yeah. Water. Just forget it all. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. And that's, that's the same with energy work. There are so many valuable, positive things that are absolutely life-changing, but are you connected to God? Are you clear? This is where the whole, I can't do this work unless I stay clear. Mm. You know, if I, if I would drink every day and if I was living <laughs> what a certain lifestyle, then it would be really hard <laughs> for me to be clear for someone else. So it's, mm. and it's the same with you. Are so, you clear? Are you connected? Yeah. So how does, how does, it affect you as a practitioner clearing people? Do you have to guard yourself against? I know when, when I pray over people, I have to, you know, guard myself to, when I go in. Um, but is I don't know if it's the same with energy work. So what I've always done is just because I am just that really open, loving. Um, so you just picture like almost, you know, God's healing, love and light coming down through the top of your head, all the way down mm -hmm. through the center. Mm -hmm. And then that light radiates out from you. And there mm -hmm. is no darkness in the light. Mm -hmm. So I if it. I become the light and I just, and ask set that intention, then there's no dark energy coming on me. And then I can clear people yeah, and be in a good space and then being hydrated. What's crazy is energy work and water go hand in hand. Okay. So the more hydrated you are, things flow better. Okay. So that's, that's okay. the key. And then taking care of yourself, grounding. Are you going out in nature every day? Are you walking barefoot? That clears all of that energy as well. Those we're, are important things to do. I love you that you reminded me of that because that's something we were really big into in our group um, in the summer because we could go out and do that. That's <laughs> every morning I'd go out and I'd stretch and I'd pray, get my, you know, take all my shoes, take my shoes off, take my socks off and walk in the grass. I love it. It just became addicting almost. To, it just felt so good. And so now that we're out here in Florida, yesterday after we met, I'm like, oh, I forgot about walking in the grass. So I took my shoes off, walked around, sit in the sun. Um, but how would we do that when it's colder out? Because when I was in Idaho and for you guys, how did, how does that? Let me tell you. So one of the original books on earthing or grounding was written by a man who had all of this pain, inflammation, different things. And he was in Alaska mm -hmm. and he realized that the longer he stood on the ground, it's almost like that pain drained down into the earth because the earth has an electromagnetic field. We do. And almost immediately you stand on it barefoot. It's moving through and you're mm. connected. So everyone in his town, and this is Alaska, it's warm there like, you know, a hot minute. Just kidding, it's not even a hot minute. But, <laughs> but you can do that. Another option is, and I just learned this. That's why I love sharing things because you're always learning something new. Pure wool socks. If you put on the pure wool socks, you can go outside and it's just like you're barefoot on the ground, but it's not going to do the damage to your feet. So, oh, there you go. really? Okay, mm -hmm. that's good to know. So I just thinking, I just, I made you the co-host also. So if there's anything you wanted to share on the screen, I think you sh you can do that now, but I don't know if you wanted to or not. Oh, I'll just, yeah. Okay, no. We're good. Okay. All right. Uh, we're good. Oh, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Can I, cause I can share it. I can do the belief code if you want. Can you sure. see me? Yeah, I can. Yeah. So I okay, was wondering, so I'm, mm -hmm. are you pulling up my screen? Yeah. Uh, not yet. Is it letting you share? Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. I was just going to pull it up. Okay. I'll well, I guess let's, you can share if you at the bottom and the green where it says share screen, click okay. on there Pulling and see if it'll my... let you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So there we go. So I've got that. And so now I'm going to go back to zoom. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. Share screen. And let's see if it shares. And so what I want is, can you see? Oh, yay. Yeah. Change. You can see it? Change. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is the belief code and this is where we start. So the belief code pulls it all in together. It's incorporating the emotion code, the body code, because you have these negative programs and limiting beliefs. Many of the times you don't even know how they got there, but they become the filter to how you are, are responding in the world. When information comes in, you filter it through this old stuff. So if you had a really bad breakup and he betrayed you and you're resentful, then this new information comes in, goes through this filter of, Ooh, they're probably going to betray me. Like you don't have mm. that trust or you don't feel safe. If you had instances in childhood that you didn't feel safe, then everything around you is sort of a threat. So we go in, I go in and come up with this entire plan and it takes a while. So if we start with what type of belief system you have. And so a basic belief system, as you can see, it's like a tree. And so your negative programs are like the leaves and the branches, your limiting beliefs are the trunk, your faulty core belief is the root, and your faulty core identity is going to be the soil around it. Mm. 
<laughs> so first step is mapping all of that out. Every single limiting beliefs. A lot of times people could have three to five negative programs, two to four limiting beliefs, one faulty core belief, one faulty core identity. And then we go through and we have to find associated imbalances. So things in your body are off. Maybe your spine's misaligned. Maybe your um, hypothalamus needs extra love and support. So the body code's actually quite intense on everything that it can pull out, especially if you have, it'll just do highest and best goods unless you have something specific. So I had one lady, she was getting acne on her side and halfway through, she's like, oh, can we focus on that? And I'm like, yes, we can now. So I, but I only had time to do a few corrections, but it was interesting. She had two bottom teeth that were out of alignment. So we energetically realigned those. And then it came up to use um, castor oil and geranium. Hmm. And that was her personal oil. Now, is that going to be for every single person who has acne? No, mm -hmm. because you're so individual, which is why this is amazing. So when wow. you go into the body code, um, it just goes through everything's from you, you can have a misalignment in your system, your chakra, your skeleton, your soft mm -hmm. tissue, and then you can break down to exactly where it is. Let's say it's in the lower limb, it's in the leg, and then it'll give you the exact place that's out. So this, this work is really exciting to me to map something out like that for someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like how you have the, the, the physical symptom and then the emotional issue that's related to that symptom is that what the, this emotion coach um, well this is just general in? energy but anything okay. can cause anything and any energy can flow anywhere but that's normally what your heart or your small intestine the emotions that they're going to hold would be abandonment betrayal so if you have like a really area of weakness it might be interesting to look at those emotions and see if there's something that you've struggled with for a long period of time mm. because they'll create a weakness in that body part so if anybody who's watching, can they reach out to you if there's one of these things that they're thinking, wow, this is something I've really been struggling with, but I, I never knew what it was or doctors can't figure it out. They can, yes. I'm sure they can get in touch so, with you. And so what I've been doing right now, I've been doing, um, so the belief code session. So one long session, we can do it by Zoom like we're doing now and you can see what's happening or I can do it for you. You don't have to be there. And then I send you all of the results. That's been amazing too. I work on this 13 year old girl who does give me permission, but she doesn't want to sit and do it. And her mom's like, she changes. When you do those sessions, it changes. It gets rid of all the pain because she's had some more severe trauma in her past, mm -hmm. but then it's just something we just continue doing. So her That's mom's awesome. like, okay, she's coming back from her dad. Can you do a session tomorrow? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. well, she's, she's like, don't do it now. She's with her dad. I, yeah. I want her when she's good. I'm like, okay. I clear her out. Yeah. So what about, um, they have like common things that maybe in our group that they may have questions about. So like digestive health, for example, and that's definitely, are these particular, like it says lung or colon. Um, well, once again, says, that's why that's, everyone's individual. So then yeah. we would go back and we would ask for you and okay. it, so, yeah, so just a whole session that incorporates the, okay. the part. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen okay. now, you guys. And then, and then for example, you know, if people are feeling stuck with their weight loss, that's, that comes up just because people have plateaus naturally, right? Like anything, right? Mm -hmm. So you dive into something brand new, your body's feeling really great, which is always good. And then the results are flowing and you're just like all the, I call the wellness, the wellness onion layers are getting unpeeled and all these great things are happening. And then there's kind of a plateau. Um, how do you, is that something that you have to work with each person individually to see if they like maybe limiting beliefs might be coming up or maybe it's just not the right thing for their body in that moment? I mean, how, I don't know. Is yeah. So then come in. So it's like, okay, hi, Cindy, what's your issue? Well, mm -hmm. I plateaued with my weight loss. Okay. Awesome. Let's do a session directed towards that because maybe you have all this belief system of self-sabotage and being a victim. So it doesn't matter what you do. Eventually you're going to get it back anyways. So we release mm. all of that past programming that's stopping you, or maybe as we're going through or finding your body and it's like, you're not sleeping enough. Like how many hours of, oh yeah. Well, if you're not sleeping, no wonder your body's not releasing the weight. And then we can muscle test and we can go through and why aren't you sleeping? What do you need to sleep? How can we solve this problem? That's so neat. Yeah. Cause so I'm that, thinking that's even... what it does. Yeah. Yeah. That's great too. Cause I was thinking, so that that's an issue. And then also just trouble with fasting. So I feel like for a lot of people it's beliefs, you know, as far as like 
being hungry is not okay or it's scary or there's something deeper to it that keeps people from it because we're all I mean, physiologically, that's, that's how we're designed, right? We're designed with the two energy systems for digestive, you know, for food. So carbohydrate burning and fat burning, or otherwise we would die if we ran out of food, right? <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> so, um, and I know that, and I know it's safe. I wouldn't help people do it if it wasn't. And and also healing. So if somebody's just like, ah, oh, I, I, you know, fasting more than 14 hours just freaks me out, or I just can't sustain it. Um, that's something else. I, I wonder too, it might be helpful for each individual who struggles with that to kind of work through to see what their limiting beliefs are, or I don't know. That would be really good too, because sometimes like, like that girl in childhood, well, food is now her comfort, you know? And so you can't take that away. And so maybe, maybe it wasn't that extreme of an instance, but I even remember as a girl, just, just having issues with my stepdad, I remember hiding food because it gave me a sense of safety. And so, so if fasting represents that you're not safe and that's, from old programming, once we get rid of that, then all of a sudden your next fast, you might be like, oh, well, I feel totally different. Wow. That'd be because so- you don't, you don't need the food. The food's not your safety or it's the only thing that made you happy as a child. You know, it's like, oh, that's the only time my mom was nice to me or my dad was nice is he'd buy me ice cream. So, so it's just those, so those you, memories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we just remove all the, the energy around it. Okay. And then that's what helps people move forward. Okay. Cause then they're clear. Okay. And then I was thinking even too, when we did like when we did the liver detox and then we did the parasite cleanse and the um, candida, then just even just having that as a resource of knowing, like we talked about how much of the turpentine to take or how much of, or not. Right. And then instead going and clearing your gut first, that's so individual, which what you helped us with, because I know there's a couple of ladies in our group who weren't quite ready for it yet because their gut needed to be cleared more that's just, yeah, that's so helpful than just going with a prescription of like whatever, like a generalization. This is, this is the plan. This is what you should do, but maybe not for every single person because they may not, or their bodies might not be ready for it or yeah, or just, it, it might make things worse than better. So that'd be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's cool. individual. Yeah. And then do we want to open it up for any question and answer just because I have that other appointment that I have to go to. Sorry about that. Oh, no, no, it's okay. You're good. You're good. So, um, so if if anybody's listening, does anybody want to put in the chat, um, do you have anything, any specific, anything specific you want to ask her or have an issue that you've, you know, haven't really gotten an answer to and been struggling with or, or kind of confused about something, but just really want to kind of move forward with it. Let me check my chat. So while you're doing that, I just, I have to share. Yes. 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 Happy now card deck. So uh, it was back in October, someone mentioned that maybe to do a card deck. And I love how Cynthia's brain works. Like she just like nails everything down and she's able to put together a plan. And I've had like all this knowledge from all these years and all of a sudden, but I w- had a hard time sharing it. And so it's almost like, so I said a prayer and it was almost like in 24 hours, <laughs> like I was directed on like, all oh, my information is now in a super organized system. And that's what this is. There's seven categories with seven cards each, three wild cards and a joker. Happinesshives.com is my website. You got it, okay. (laughs) Happinesshives.com. So so this card deck is now how I teach like the things that I do with someone. And you can also use it intuitively if you want to, you know, sort of do that energy with the deck. You can pull cards energetically. And I do entire tea and trainings that are super fun. Mm -hmm. on zoom and in person if you're local in person's the bomb everything at my house is the best (laughs) so this is just to help you or if you're struggling okay you you want to run through can run through an example of it yeah yeah i am so you want to continue fast and you're like gosh darn it i'm gonna go i'm gonna go run through that fast food place or whatever so you draw the card deck and then let's say you need to de-stress obviously duh so pull the de-stress category so here now you have seven options connect with your energy field and just ask what's the best thing that I could do now to de-stress. And then you pull a card and this one says support person. And then I explain each of these cards. So a support person isn't the person who's going to tell you that same negative story. They're not the person who's going to, you know, get you a drink or the ice cream or they're the person who's actually going to walk you through, Hey, it sounds like you're really struggling with that. Do you want to, um, go get like some hot water with lemon and go on a walk with me. Do you want me to take Mm -hmm. you on a walk? Mm -hmm. 
So, or maybe, you know, something else comes up, but these are all things that I've used. So every card has like a personal story behind it and they work. I mean, after all that training, mm -hmm. so that's one way to use it. Okay. Or you, you're like, I'm not ready for the big fast. Mm -hmm. I'm just not ready. I want to do like a little cleanse. I want to detox a little bit. Then you pull out the detox cards and you're like, okay, what could I do today? Just if I wanted to detox today, okay, lemon juice. Mm -hmm. So maybe today you do that because so it's to make it fun. That's my whole thing. My business is happiness hives. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of scattered and I like things to be fun and easy. But if you have a systematic mind, then you can go through there's, I teach how to go through category by category and then so you understand for yourself. So what are all the different categories that are on their cards? See those so, different colors. Obviously the foundation, and I have a fabulous little intro. So the foundation of everything is whole food. If you build your body with food, it's pretty hard to get sick. So I always give the example of you can have the best architect, contractor, and building crew. And if all that gets delivered to the building site is plastic cardboard and glue, you're not going to build a luxury home. Mm -hmm. So every time you take that bite of white flour, of white sugar, this is a beautiful home. Mm -hmm. It has high-end stuff. But what if we put like cheap knobs here and maybe <laughs> some cheap vinyl over there? That's what we do every time we eat. So the first foundational category is whole food. Next, let's say you're feeling super crazy. Let's go back to you want to stay on your fast. And the, this is the move category. So this category helps you get out of your head. Mm. back into being grounded in your body. And it's a series of energetic movements. It's not necessarily exercise. This is moving energy so that you're getting back to feeling balanced. And okay. this is another sequence. It's a sequence that you can move through or you can just pull one card. Like if you're just like, you're just angry and you're just going to do one thing. Okay. Natural therapy is layering all of these things. Maybe you have to do 15 or 20 cards and you're finally over the hump. Maybe you do two. Okay. Maybe you do one, but that's how it works. Next category is declutter. Clutter is negative energy and postponed decisions. So you want to stay on your fast and you're like, okay, I'm going to go do five minutes. I'm going to pull a card. Mm. It's going to go clean for five minutes. What you're doing is you're getting your mind off. Mm -hmm. What you think about, you get more of. So by getting your mind off something, next category we talked about was the de-stress. Lots of great stress relieving techniques. On every card, there's five things, a number a category, an action, an affirmation, inspiration, and an essential oil. Okay. Maybe you have a lot of essential oils at home. You can find out what oil you need that would help you to feel calm. Mm -hmm. Or you could start using the affirmations. You could just go through them. Or you could say, what's the affirmation I need now? I am grateful that every day is a chance to start over. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's things that can inspire you. So we went through... Um, obviously your bell worse on detox and detoxing every day. Mm -hmm. It's good to like do the big ones, but you want to be prepped for the big ones. Okay. So the detox category, then we have the herbal category. Mm -hmm. And when, these herbs are ones you want to grow your own medicinal food. You want to have food that, that God created, you picked fresh and you ate it. There's healing that you don't even know about. Mm -hmm. if you. So that's ideally what these are. Mm -hmm. And then once again, now you can see why it's so much fun to do like classes and fun lessons. Yeah, yeah. You can just have the card deck and you can start. And many of you are already educated in a lot of this. Last category, these are the big guns. That's why I say these are home remedies. Starts with enema. Mm -hmm. And my joke is, if you don't like a card, put it back. Like, I'm not, <laughs> no one's telling, with this deck, no one's telling you what You're to like, do. You're like, enema, I don't have to do an enema right now. <laughs> yeah, but then if that card keeps coming up, it yeah. might say, Hmm. you know what, maybe I'll look into doing my own enema or maybe, maybe hmm. I'll go get a chronic treatment. Right. Right. And then, yeah. so we talked about the foundation of food is, is your house. It's like you built this house. The wild cards are the location. The home I'm in now happens to have a great location as well. But if this home were in the inner city ghetto, it would change things. So, so love, mm -hmm. if all you had is love for yourself, and everyone around you and your life, and you wouldn't need anything else. There's nothing else you would need. If you had 100% Christ-like unconditional love, you wouldn't need anything else. Right. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's that powerful. And so when you get just stumped and overwhelmed, you know, drink a glass of water, Aww. 
use love. And then I love myself, like give mm. yourself the affirmation over and over. Mm-hmm. And they, I have like story after story of everything. Um, pray is a card. Mm-hmm. If this word doesn't vibe with you, put intention. Right. But it's, it's connecting to that higher source. It's connecting right. to creator power. Nothing works without it. Mm-hmm. Whether you're doing AA government entitlement programs don't work. <laughs> but if you do something where they've connected to God, like mm. AA or there's a union gospel mission that takes the homeless out of addiction, that's what works. Got it. And then meditate, breathe. So every card is so powerful oh. and can teach you so much. Okay. And so the you... most powerful. Oh, mm-hmm. what? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, last card in the deck is the Joker card. We all have someone who we really can't stand <laughs> who's just creating the cycles in our life. They're the reason we can't stay on the fast because it's their fault. They suck. <laughs> and if they wouldn't stress us and pressure us. So this is what you do to that person. It's the whole Pono Pono energy work. I could teach once again. I literally did a course on it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. That's all you need Aww. to know. Say it over and over. Oh. And you just do it. And I have um, just really powerful stories of how, how I've used it in okay. my own personal life to, wow. to bring, you know, to bring That's, healing, true healing. It sounds beautiful. I love it. Yeah. It just all comes together. So Cheryl wants to know, is there, is behavior modification a part of your work? Behavior modification? No, Okay. not behavior modification. So there's cognitive behavior therapy, which is absolutely amazing. My mom did that and it totally helped her. Her brain needed something because she didn't want to relive her past. She didn't ever want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So she lets me do all of this energy work because it helps her to feel better, but we don't talk about it and because nothing ever happened. So that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Wouldn't know know from your healthy lifestyle, but (laughs) yeah. So, so cognitive behavior therapy is, is different. Okay. So a lot of what I do is I'll get rid of your negative limiting beliefs. And I'll help you to have fun making good choices. Awesome. I love, okay. So then what I can do that, did you, you gave me the links to your, to find the cards, to find you. Do I have those? Yeah. So happinesshives.com okay. has it's a shop there. section so you can get the cards and the detox tea. Everything's on there. And then um, you're welcome to text me 509-909, babe. Just kidding. It's, <laughs> it's H-A-P-P-I-N-E-S-S-hives.com. Yeah, happiness hives with an an at the end.com. Okay. Website. And then gotcha. I think there's an email way to email to and to connect because, okay. Yeah, I love to connect and yeah. to be supportive. And thanks yeah. for letting me come on. Yeah, you guys of course. Cool. Yeah, I was thinking, I mean, we could probably, I don't know if you could do a virtual group with us at any point for any of these things. I don't know if that would be something that's It'd be possible. so fun. We yeah. should totally do. It'd be fun to go over like one category or yeah. Just one concept and do something would be fun to teach. So okay. you really understand something. Okay. Okay. So then um, just real quick before you go. So when you do, just for example, because we're all doing this with you, muscle testing for dosaging for the um, pine gum spirits. So how does that happen? You you tap into each person's because you they get permission. You get their permission first. And then what so do you So if I do? have your name and permission, then I just get centered. I say my prayer. And then ask if I, you know, do I have permission to test for this person? And then I, then I just work through that series of questions. Does this person, is this a good time for this person to take the pine gum spirits? No. Is there something this person can do now? Yes. And then I go through because I do have a lot of background so I can go through and, and try and ask the right questions until I get the right answer. Got it. Okay. Just so that they know what's happening when they give you permission, they see what's, what you're doing and how that's all Yeah. So it's, it's a whole little process. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. So let me see if there's anything else. Everyone's saying thank you. And this is awesome. Let's see. <laughs> uh, thank you. Behavior modification. It's in these website. This is very interesting. Awesome. Thanks, lady. So yeah. So feel free to reach out to her anytime. I know she's happy to help. And then um, if any of you want to do a group, that'd be really fun to just kind of tap into this or just honestly, the one-on-one was amazing. So if you want to do that and you need to some breakthrough or answers to questions that you just can't figure out, she can really fig- like it's amazing. Her training can help you figure out exactly what it is and how to how to move forward and and live your life without that thing. So, anyway. yeah. And I would love for everyone to have a card deck because yes. they're super fun to play with. I'm gonna so get one. When you order your card deck, you become a newbie. Get it, newbie. <laughs> and, <laughs> the and then you get your first t- there. You get a T and training, but that's just like free that comes with your deck. So that way you can start using it. But it's as easy as you can get the deck and just start drawing a card. 
Okay. So I'm going to get it. So they're on your website, right? I can find it on your website. On my website. On so yeah. Okay. So if you do, and then I'll just pop it in the mail to you if you order. Okay. Yay. Sounds like fun. Okay. Sending you guys awesome. lots of love. And thank you. We'll see you. All right. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you again.